Yeah, we all have battles. Right. Well, he grew up just like so him. About eight, I guess. He, he was just like, he didn't have a home. He didn't have a home. Yeah, he, it was just, you know, and that's the way he acted. Nobody to control him. Yeah. And, and Scrap, you know, who Aunt Scrap was. That was, uh, Aunt Scrap was Daddy's sister, who was totally blind, that lived with Mother and Daddy all their married life. Yeah. And she looked after us kids like a mother hen. Well, but Ace, uh, you know, when we were at home, he had no, he had nobody to control it. Yeah. When Daddy wasn't there, he did what he wanted to. Yeah. And. What were we talking about? Well, he wasn't very old. Let's see. I don't know. He just starting to school, I guess. You're talking about five years old. Oh, just about school age. Six or seven. Uh huh. Six or seven. He used to chase him uh, down yeah, the uh, street and catch him well, in his face. To go to school every morning, he didn't want to brush his teeth and comb his hair. And I'd chase him halfway to school with a brush and a wash cloth to try to wash his face and comb his hair. And I mean, he didn't have anybody to, there was no set anything. We just kind of lived like hit and miss. Kind of like gypsies or what? What? Now, when you guys came out from, well, uh, from Tishomingo. Well, when we came out from Tishomingo, we lived in. What year about is this we're talking about? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what year it was. Well, I mean, if he was five years old, when, so was he going to school in, where was he going to school? Were you talking about Tishomingo when he started school? Did you go to school in Tishomingo at all? No, no, no. Nobody went to school in Tishomingo. No, I don't remember anybody going to school no. in Tishomingo. I think Sadell said she went to school. There. Yeah, she probably did. She and maybe Johnny. Yeah. I don't then know. Then you guys moved from Tishomingo to where? To, to Texas? Uh, Matador, I think is what she told me. Yes. To Matador. And uh, we lived in people's garage. That's what she told me. Picking cotton. Picking cotton and dirt floor. And there was a crack about this wide in between where the doors came to. We had to hang cotton sacks up to keep the snow and and the wind out. Dirt floor, a wood stove inside, wood stove, cook stove is what we, what we use for, for cooking and also for heat. And we would start to school And when the cotton was ready to be picked, we'd take it off. And we'd pick cotton until the, the cotton, there was no more cotton to be picked. And that would be maybe, we might go a month, we might just go a few weeks, and then we would be out till maybe May. We didn't go to school. We'd pick cotton all the time. Until the cotton was all picked because that was our living. So what did you guys do for money in between when there was no cotton to pay? Well, uh, I don't know what Daddy did, but... Uh, so that says he would go out and, and uh, plow. That he would find jobs plowing behind a mule. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't don't know anybody that did that. I didn't do it. And I, I said, they didn't, none of the kids did it, but 
My dad says he's probably. Well, my daddy, daddy, daddy too. But I, I mean, so, well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We did pick on. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It just works. Yeah. We did pick on. But then when we moved to Amherst, there were no jobs to be had. So wait a minute, back and up. And we lived in this little two-room house there in town. And we couldn't even afford to turn the water on. So we'd have to walk about a block to get a bucket of water from a neighbor to drink or whatever we used it for. And if we, like we carried, did some washing, carried the water there, and then we'd take the water we used and scrub the floors and do other stuff with it after we worked at the washing to clean up, you know, the floors and everything like that. And this little house, it we didn't have a heating stove. We just used a, a coal stove to cook on. Or you could use wood or whatever. And I know one time, Daddy was gone. We didn't have anything to eat with, and it was real cold. And I went out, and I got burrs, cotton burrs. I thought you got cow chips. Pardon? I thought you got cow chips. Well, I got cotton burrs, too, first. Yeah, okay. Cotton burrs. And then... And that, that, a couple of times I went and got cow chips. And those cow chips, you know, they're, they're some of the neighbors around had cows. And they'd stake their cows out on a vacant lot. They'd go pick up the cow chips and bring them home and burn them. And boy, they made a hot fire. Yeah. And, um. But they didn't stink a little bit? They didn't stink at all. Really? And you, they didn't smell where you would burn them. And if they're dry, they didn't smell. They must have different cows. Right well, they uh, they didn't they didn't smell at all. And um, how long were you guys in Amherst? Gee, I don't know. Several years. Um, I was there. Well, I got married at age fifteen. Right, so you guys pretty much went to school in Amherst then. Yeah, what school we got, and I didn't get very much. So back then, what were you guys doing for a living there, though? Still picking cotton there? Well, Daddy did what he, he had his little truck. And what he could haul on the truck to make a dollar, he did. So he was like, living in New Mexico and pick up Pardon? white apples and potatoes and bring them back and sell them. Well, like he might go over and get a load of beans and, and, and New Mexico and take them in to Lubbock or something like that. or a load of potatoes and trade them for some other... Pardon? In New Mexico, not Mexico. Yeah, uh -huh. New Mexico. And, um, but we lived in a little two-room house. How many of you is in this two-room two house? Well, there was, at first, there was all of us. Mom, Dad. Well, my mom was long gone. I, I, what did she die? Well, she died. Where did that Oklahoma? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember when she died. Her name was uh, Letha. Letha. What she died from? Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Okay, so then she died, and then you guys got on, loaded up, and came out. From no, after she died, we uh, Daddy moved to. Eastern Oklahoma, and we lived out there on a little old farm. I remember the, the log cabin we lived in. I could lie there on the bed and I could see the, the snakes crawling across the ceiling. At first it scared me to death, and I told Aunt Scrap, and she says, well, what color are they? And I said, they're white. And she said, well, don't worry about them. You know, Aunt Scrap was totally blind. And she said, don't worry about them. They're, they're mouse snakes. They just clean up all the mice. They're good to have around. So I didn't. But 
I still, every time I would, and the, the cabin had, you know, uh, uh, there were uh, uh, empty spots in between the, the rooms. Yeah. And you would poke stuff in there, I'd poke the, the uh, things that I used to use with the iron and stuff like that in, in there. Well, uh, anyway, they, uh, and when we lived out there at, at this little place, with was just a little, there was a, a one room about this big, and then you step down, and then a l another little room back here. And this room did not have a floor in it. It was just a, no floor at all. It was just a, a dirt floor. And that was the kitchen. This was where we slept. And uh, we had a heating stove, or he uh, a heater in that room in the other room, which we used for feed. And I don't remember what we ate. Daddy made some money from Paul and things with his truck. Whatever he could get to haul, he would haul and make a little bit of money that would buy some kind of food for us. But how many of you was in this room, though? Uh, well, Still. at first, all of us, there's Johnny, Sedell, me, Ace, and James. So five of you and, plus uh, uh, your dad. Uh, let's see. Boris, Johnny, Ace, me, James. Down there are six of them. And Daddy. So seven of you in one room. Uh -huh. But Aunt Scrap, though she was blind, she could do just about anything. Now, you had to tell her a lot of times, you know, she'd ask you, now, what's this? Or, uh, uh, what color is this, or what, you know, and you'd have to tell her, but she, she could do just about anything. She could cook, she couldn't, of course she couldn't sew, but she could cook, and, and uh, she could make the best homemade life, life bread you ever tasted. Homemade light bread? Uh-huh, like, like store-bought light bread and the loaf. And she looked after us, all of us. And I slept with Aunt Scrap and with Sedell. And Ace, Ace slept at the foot of the bed. And sleep down at the bottom, huh? Uh-huh. He slept at the foot of the bed, as I remember. And Sometimes I slept at the foot of the bed, but I slept with Aunt, with Sedell and Aunt Scrap. And we usually, like, we'd have two, two beds in one room. And maybe that would be all that would, and a dresser maybe in there, in one room. And then the other room, like, this one place I know, the other part was, this had a floor in it, but the kitchen didn't have a floor, it was a dirt floor. And it had a table and a stove and chairs out there. And I, I know that I don't remember ever being real cold. 
because we, you could always build a big fire. And usually there was a fireplace. You could build a big fire in the fireplace, or there was a big pot bed of stove. And you could t take those cow chips and put in those in that stove. You'd think they stink, but they don't. No. You pick them up, and they were they were dry. They had no how smell long, at all. How long would they burn? They burned up pretty fast. And, uh, but if they are dry, they just made the best fire. You could make a red hot stove out of them. So you cook off of those too? No, we didn't cook with those. But uh, we did cook on the, with usually coal or wood. And it's hard to find wood. And it was too expensive to buy coal. So whatever we could find, it, they would burn in the cook stove. That's what we cooked on. So if you couldn't find wood or coal, then what did you guys do? Uh, well, we usually didn't have any trouble, uh, but we still uh, I mean, we were able to cook whatever we wanted to. So your dad would go out and do odd jobs. What were you guys doing in the meantime? Well, uh, Sedell, when she got married, finally Ernie told her that if she got married, that he was going to look for somebody else because he was tired of waiting. That was a help proposal. So finally she she decided to marry him. So she left and, and uh, so they took off and went to Lebanon. Uh, Is that how they got the love of land? No, he was, he was still in Manador. What? Ernest was in Manador when he got married. Yeah, yeah, they were in Manador. They, that, old, that land opened up uh -huh. later on when they went to They were in Manador. Well, what were you guys still doing back in the, in the They were in, actually in White Fat. Yeah, White Fat. Uh, what were we doing? Yeah, what did you do when your dad went out was doing odd jobs? Well, Daddy was usually working on somebody's farm and we lived in some little junk house on the property, maybe a little one room. So your mother died, so he was raising you. Well, when my mother died before, let's see, there, there was James A's and, and me were not going to school. Scrap, Sadell, and Scrap, and I, and Ace, usually, maybe slept in one bed. The boys all slept in another bed. Ace is a boy. Oh. just a little boy, working on the farm, everything. He did everything. Oh, so how old was he? Hey, oh. He was doing man's work. He was just, he wasn't me, he was in grammar school. Like eight, ten? Probably, I would say eight. Eight? Eight or nine years old. So 
and what was my dad doing? How much younger was he? Five? Well, he was younger than I was. So he was probably three, four years old? Uh huh. And. So that's why he's sleeping at the bottom of the bed. He's three, four years old. Right, uh huh. And. So how long did you guys stay in this, in, was it? Amherst? This was in, this is Matador. Oh, Matador. But we'd moved from Tishomingo. Well, first of all, Daddy couldn't pay the rent on the farm. He lost everything. And, you know, there was a drought, and then there was just no money at all. And my mother died, so he moved into town. And I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what he was trying to make a living on, or what he was, where he was getting food uh, even. But I don't ever remember being hungry. So they all seem to think that he had a little credit in a couple places too. Well, I'm sure he had credit. He probably owed everybody in the country. I was going to say, Chanel says she feels bad that she... Well, I, I think credit people gave him credit paper. more because he did have all these kids to feed. And, and, uh, but I don't ever remember being hungry. Didn't have. Well, I never said that either. She said she just remembers being cold sometimes when you guys were getting that pickup. But I, I was never hungry. I was, I was cold too. But um, there was so many things you wanted, but you never got. Then we, Daddy, uh, he left Oklahoma came to West Texas out to Matador. Ma Matador and White Flat White Flat and he did our jobs with big cotton we'd stay out of school as long as there's anything bowls or anything to be picked we'd stay out of school pick cotton and Of course, when we went back to school, we were way behind all the other kids. But uh, there were other kids that had to stay out, too. But not a lot of them, but some of them did. And, um, but finally, uh, Ernest and Snell wanted to get married. But she didn't want to go off and leave us because she felt that she was needed there. And finally, Ernest told her if he didn't, she didn't marry him, he was going he's going to look for somebody else then. So she left. They left. She left. And we still got along all right. I, I, we didn't, of course, Sadell could do anything. And A. Scrap was there. She did the washing. She couldn't see, but if you heated the water and helped her get it in a pan where she didn't burn herself, she'd wash the clothes, and if they were real dirty, she'd have you check them to see if they were clean before she'd go on with the procedure. She washed water. Uh huh. Yeah, and then before we rinse them and hang them out, and you guys have an outhouse or what? A pardon? You have an outhouse? Yeah, there were outhouses, but we usually lived in some little house, about like that little shack back there, a little one room house somewhere on the property. We had everything in that one little room. Sometimes it had a floor in it, sometimes it just had a dirt floor. So how long were you running around doing this so before things started lightening up? I mean, so from well, this, the age of this my father 
were saying three years old till what? Ten, well, fifteen? Uh, let's see. For ten, yeah, fifteen we years to, this went uh, on? We moved to Oklahoma, but I don't remember how old we were when we moved to Oklahoma. I, I think I was probably oh, about in the first or second grade. But I didn't, I, uh, you know, didn't get to go to school. We had to stay home and pick up. And I didn't get to start until after the, the cotton was all gathered. When did you guys move from Matador to Texas? Well, we, well Matador, I mean, see, we moved from... So, so they'll get married before we left Matador? Uh, we moved from Oklahoma to Texas. To Matador, yeah. Okay, now in Matador, this is when you started uh, uh, school and uh, picking cotton. Uh-huh, we were picking cotton. Now, how long did this and go we on? Lived, we, well, we lived in different places. All right, but I mean, how many years did this go on? I don't know, it seemed like forever. I mean, two years, three years? Several five years. Five years, six years? Um, you are still in Amherst when you got married at 15, weren't you? Yeah, I was, so I was 15 when I got married. And so, and so you're talking seven or eight years. Seven or eight years, uh -huh. doing the same routine. Year uh -huh. after year after year, and never get a foothold. No, uh, could get a foot and Daddy did. Uh, L. He he would haul anything he could haul with his truck to make a dime. Now he had to keep that truck going. So he's a mechanic, or what? Well, he he would just no. He would haul whatever anybody had to haul. Well, who worked on the truck? So you had to do your own mechanic work. I don't know who worked on the oh, truck. Gee. He'd go to Mexico and take a load of, uh, of beans, maybe, and well, bring back up. Now, how long did it take him to go down to New Mexico and back? Well, he'd go overnight. Overnight? Uh-huh. And uh, then he'd go in the morning and then come back that night. Well, what would you guys do all day, though? Well, we'd either go to school or... Uh, Whatever we had to do around the house. Did you do any work around town? Or? No, we, there wasn't any jobs to be had. There was no nothing that a kid could do. And and Amherst, or in, and we 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 first lived at we lived at White Flat, Texas, and at. Uh, Matador, and we moved to Olden and did cotton one that year, and then we moved to Amherst. Where's Olden? Olden is... Is it closer to uh, Matador or to Amherst? It's, it's about 30 miles north of Amherst. Amherst. Okay. Uh, was Sadell married before they, you, she left Matador? Before you left Matador? No. She was. She came. She got married she after Amherst. we moved to Amherst. The fact is, um, they wanted to get married, but she she didn't feel she could go off and leave us. Finally, Ernest got tired of waiting on her, and he said, "Well." If you don't marry me, I'm going to look for somebody else. So when she moved, so it's just the rest of you is still there for the next, so she was gone for how long? The whole time you were in Amherst, she was over in Lebanon? No, uh, no. She, they didn't go to Lebanon until later. When did you guys go to Lebanon? We never really she moved never to Lebanon at all. So my dad wasn't in Lebanon? Uh-uh. Oh, I thought he was over in Lebanon. No, hey, we, so we lived in Amherst. Amherst and Siddell moved over there. Yeah, but we lived in, in Amherst, and then, oh, let's see, what's that other little town over there? Oh, uh, White Flat, White Face, I mean, White Face or White Flat? Oh. White Flat. Well, we lived in White Flat, but this White was, uh-uh. Didn't he go to live with Sadell and Ernest after they got married? Yeah, well, Sadell and Ernest lived down 
under the cap law after they got married. They, they lived on one of the Whitaker's farms. And Chase went down and lived with them for a while. And and I stayed home. It rained last night or early this morning. But and, and scrap. A lot of rain last week. I can't remember when Aunt Scrap died. Did she? How old was she then? She seemed like she's hundred and ten. She really was. She was in her sixties, I think. Aunt Scrap was your dad's sister. sister. She was an old maid. She'd never been married, but she was totally blind. And she had a sister that was partially blind. She could see objects. She could tell their life from dark. She could see another objects. Another one of your dad's sisters. Another sister. What was her name? And she could tell, you know, she could get around by herself without falling down. But Aunt Scrap could not get around by herself with, without being in a place that she knew where everything was. Otherwise, what was the other girl? What's the sister's name? And Kelly. Kelly, Kelly. And then he had another sister that was younger, and she was okay. Okay. Well, Daddy had another sister. Her name was Aunt Kitty. And then he had two brothers. What were their names? But they were doing real well. I don't know. What was the two brothers' name? Uh, one of them's name was Uncle Joe. The other one was. It was Eugene's dad. What? Eugene's dad. What was his name? I can't remember. Your dad's brother. Uncle Prentice. Yeah, Prentice. Uncle Prentice. Uncle Prentice. And they lived up in Texas somewhere, but I can't remember the name of the town. They did in Texas. They ended up in New Mexico. Uh-uh, it was up in, up in Oklahoma somewhere. Well, I saw her name. What was her name? Uh -huh. Prentice was her husband. Well, they, the girls, one of them was school teacher. The girls were school teacher, and she was teaching school up in New Mexico. I mean, the daughter of the, of the aunt. But back down to where we were, we lived on on uh, people's all little houses on their place. They'd have a little house like that out there, out there, one room place or something. And we'd live there. And a field hand shack. Uh-huh. And Daddy would do handiwork. Or was he kind of he, you know, I remember him as a kid. He always seemed kind of bitter. He, he wasn't, he never joked around. He never, you know, he came up to live with us one time. And he just always seemed bitter and kind of angry. He never spoke. Well, about maybe he was. I don't know. But he, he at the he same time, did. he worked really hard. Yeah, I was going to say, he seemed like. He'd so get up real early. The sound, you know, I can see now from. Like I say, for me, seeing him as a kid, he had a hard life, you know, so. He, you know. we had to get up at sunrise, and we didn't leave that cotton patch until that sun was going down at night. It was dark. So he said, back. too, so he said, your dad would look over and say, get to work, get to work. <laughs> and we'd stop for lunch. Boy, when you got that last bite down, you went back and got a hold of that sack and went back to picking cotton 
or chopping cotton, whatever you were doing. So what? How big a sack were you guys pulling? And one sack was the best part near that chair. And a lot of times I would have like 80 pounds in it, 60, 80 pounds in it when I'd weigh up. But sometimes I would beat them in in the field picking cotton. Now, what do you attribute that to? What do you figure was your, your trick? Well, I think the main thing was that when I went out to work, I worked solid all day. I didn't stop. What did you get for 80, 80 pound sack of cotton? Mm -hmm. I don't remember what we got. Maybe 50 cents or 100. So did you ever get up to like dollar a day or? I don't know because I never got any the money. Daddy collected all the money that we made. Yeah. But there were times that I would beat some of the men in, that worked in the same field and they quit and we wouldn't let me beat them. Yeah. So when you guys got through this period of five, six, seven year period of well, well, this is several years. I don't know how many years it was. So this is pretty much how you lived for five, six, seven years. Right, but several kind years. Kind of went to school in between, kind of did everything. Well, you anything start to school when school started. And whenever the cotton started opening up, you would step out of school, and you would pick cotton every day from sun up. That was when you were out in the field when the sun came up. Sometimes you couldn't start picking cotton that early because there'd be a little dew on. You'd have to wait for that to kind of dry out. And then you'd pick cotton until the sun went down. After the sun went down, you quit. Now, was there anything that you can remember in this five, six, seven year period? Any highlights or anything tragic or anything good or anything happened in that five, six, seven year period? I mean, it just... Was it just humdrum every day? This is the exact same thing every this day? Was, this was a humdrum thing every day. It was the same thing. Did you guys never did anything for fun? Did you ever go to a dance, go to a movie? No, there was no such fun. The answer was bad. There was no, no movies. I've so, never uh, had seen a movie. Well, let me get this straight around the house now. Was your dad pretty religious? Um. You guys sit around praying every night? No, or? no. So it was pretty, pretty... Our, our, our religion was our own. We did what we wanted to do on that. Okay, so didn't, you weren't getting the Bible beat every night or anything like no, that? No, uh-uh. So okay. now, was anybody getting in trouble? Or? Well, no. We had to mind if we told lies or, or did something like that. Well, Daddy punished us. Did you lick it or what? Yes. With the razor strap? With a razor strap. I think I got that razor strap still at my mom's. Yeah, he would get his razor strap. I think out. my dad took that when he left. A few times he left some marks on us, but he never whipped us too hard. Yeah. But. So there was nothing really you guys got in trouble for. Yeah. I mean, hard enough. So no highlights, anything you can think of in a five or seven year period of anything major. Well, there are more than five or seven years. This was. Well, uh, so you're probably talking, if you were talking, he was born in 21. You're talking between 1920 and 1930. Now, when was the Depression? It was all my life. This was in the 1930s, about the middle of it. So, by the, well, so things were bad before the Depression even hit. Well, and then when the depression hit, 1928 was when the depression so, came. So you guys were already depressed before the uh -huh. depression hit. Uh -huh. So what did you guys do? Then things got even worse. I, know, I remember talking about soup lines and all that. Now, did you guys ever have to get in a soup line? Or? There weren't any soup lines. That was a big city. Okay, so... There, were, weren't any, there wasn't so any then place to... You, then you guys talked about, did you ever hear the news of other places to go besides... Texas? Well, know, we left Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Uh, I don't know, Daddy. We we moved from where we were living up in eastern Oklahoma, where Daddy, uh, he didn't have anything to farm with another year. And uh, we 
we just didn't have anything. Okay. And Daddy did little odd jobs, made a little money once in a while, and we didn't we didn't have very much to eat, but we had plenty of of flour and we had some bacon and beans. That's what Sally said too. She said she still eat. Said she had a lot of potato, a lot of potato uh, soup too. We had potatoes and beans, and, and we. Um, Not a lot of meat. That sound like. The, well, a lot of times Johnny would go out and kill some squirrels or or some rabbits or you know some wild life. Or he and Daddy. See, that makes sense for Johnny because he continued to hunt. You know, you know he was a hunter later in life. Uh huh. When we killing that big elk and all that, so well, he stayed they, a hunter. They, the boys hunted all kinds of animals. Had a gun? You no, know, one time, uh, a squirrel ran up a tree. And I don't know if it's Ace or Johnny went up to make it, try to make it go back down. And then he got it to come down. And he said, "Grab it!" It came down the tree, and I grabbed it by the tail. Boy, I did Boy, I turned loose of it in a hurry because it just about bit my finger off. Yeah. Boy, they can. They have real sharp teeth. Yeah. Well, yeah, like the never heels. So you guys uh, hunted, but you never did anything for what you guys, you had to do something for fun every once in a while when your grand, when granddad Foster was gone. You guys never even, did you even learn how to dance or? There was no such thing as dancing. There was never, did anybody never. play an instrument? No. Your dad did play the guitar, didn't he? I will say my dad played the guitar. He did, you said they used to sit around. My dad played the guitar, now he had to learn that somewhere. Well, you, you've told me about them, uh, your uncle. How do you, how do you work? My dad remembers telling me about how when he would step in and play with Bob Wells and Texas Play, Playboys when they came through, and he sat in and played with those guys once in a while. That was way later than they, they had. Well, you said your, your, uh, one of your uncles played the fiddle and your dad played the guitar. Well, this was way your back. sister, that was in Oklahoma, and your sister played the piano. Yeah, my older sister. Around the house. That was before Texas. Okay, so. sister. Do I? Their older sister played the piano. Herschel. Who? Herschel, my oldest sister. Herschel? Uh huh. She died of tuberculosis, too. Well, see, I had two older sisters. Verna. Herschel was the oldest. Then Verna. Then Sedale. But Verna died when she was five years old. What she died from? But Urshel lived to be 16. Well, what did, what Ver, did Verna die from? Verna died. Well, five years old when she died Five from. years old, and that... What did what, she die from? Uh, TB. No, Urshel's one that died from TB. Yeah, and no, let's see. Verna did. She was only five years old. I, I, I don't remember what she, I, I think it was. Probably one of the childhood diseases. I think it was pneumonia. But I don't remember. Now, Sally tells me that they, the Ursula, Urshel, Urshel, how do you say it? Urshel. Urshel. E A R S H E L. Got TB. Uh huh. And that Granddad Foster went and traded. There was a guy coming around in a uh, horse buggy that had potions in it, uh, medicine. And he traded uh, a sack of potatoes or something to get some of this called something 336 or 366. Oh, yeah. I think it's 666. Well, man. Well, she called it 366 something. Uh, it was something for tuberculosis. She said it was mostly. Well, I think it was just a tonic, and that they did. And arsenic or something. They they gave that it's that for everybody. She said it was mostly poison. It, it was just that that was 
was uh, just a, the only medicine I ever took when I was little that then. Do you that, remember it was called? 366? Yeah, it was some kind of 66. Yeah, that's what she said. And so she, and then she came right up with it. She said, oh yeah, well, I had to trade for some 366. I said, hold up, what are you talking about? And she said, no, she said, I think it was mostly quinine and she said, it I was, think she it said was it like, or something. Yeah, something. No, I think it was kind of like taking, um, oh, uh, kind of like a, oh, uh, oh, Pepsi. 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 That was the Raleigh man who used to come around, wasn't it? Well, he, I don't know if he, he, he had that. that. Well, she said he used to go down when she were trying to save her. They said they tried to buy some stuff, and they used to go down to the dock. If they didn't have it, then the guy would come by with a horse and buggy, and he would sell it to him. You'd have to trade for it. Yeah. Well, a lot of times they trade. They trade. You could, the farmers would trade anything they had. Yeah. Sometimes they would. The, people that had it would trade with them. Sometimes they didn't, but. Now, then they, then Sally said that eventually they took her to the hospital and she never came home. She never went to the hospital. She never went to the hospital. None of them went to the hospital. My older sister died with tuberculosis. She was 16 when she died. My mother never went to the hospital. She died at home. Um, and Scrap never went to the hospital. She died at home. Um, my mother had tuberculosis, and she died at home. Now, how long does this tuberculosis, how long do you hang on with this tuberculosis? I mean, is it a short process, or were they at home dying for a year, or? Uh, I don't know. I know that. I mean, they asked, I've never seen anybody die of tuberculosis. I don't really even know what what. what well, tuberculosis is, is a lung disease. Or lung disease. Lung uh, so, and it's very contagious. Very hard to get to where it's bothering you. It's your it, uh, at the time it is because generally you know, it's weird. Some people get it, some don't. They probably still have things on the nose. They should sell some. And I'm, I'm surprised because we lived in Oklahoma when, I know, when my mother died and Ursula died. Ursula died first. She had been away to school and got sick and came home and died. And my mother took it from her. But we lived in, in town then. And we had a bunch of persimmon trees in the backyard. And her bed was out under those persimmon trees. Uh, and she didn't live very long after, neither my mother or Ursula either, after they took tuberculosis. But none of the rest of us took it. Now, I've heard this story about somebody's bed under the tree before. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I heard it was well, the, the best thing for tuberculosis is good food, fresh air, and rest. Well, you know, so I'm thinking about it now. It's probably get you out of the house so you good don't affect everybody else. Good antibiotic, you know, that's what they. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm sure they probably didn't want to affect everybody in the house either. Right. Well, I don't know how much they knew about it, but I know that. My mother and my sister both were out outside all the time, under well, the trees. That's probably why. They I don't even remember it raining or anything. They probably knew that they didn't want to infect you guys. Yeah. They just didn't tell you that, so they stayed out but there. But they didn't live very long after they got it. So they tried to protect you guys and stay outside uh -huh. outdoors. Now, James, now, uh, I heard this story somewhere from somebody about James going somewhere across the street and getting a, is it James, was he a little guy? Yeah. Yeah. And he ate some bad peanuts and went out and laid down, his stomach swelled up, and, and that's how he died? 
that he died from some kind of poison, some kind of peanuts in, in a barrel. Well, I know my dad told me this. And that they, no, like, wow. I don't, no, he, he died from... I don't know what what he ate, but he 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 died from. Can you try to get castor oil? Well, see, this may fit because my dad told me it was a, a barrel. Or you're not supposed to eat certain peanuts, I guess, or they were bad, or no. they weren't raw, or they weren't cooked, or something. No, I so think maybe he, it was already took. Who knows? Yeah. No, I think it, it was just that he had got the disease. You don't have disease, do you? Sure. Oh, huh? There's a lot of any stories moving back and forth. You know. uh, but I, my, my, the version I heard was he went to over to the store and was in there and he ate something he wasn't supposed to eat and then his stomach swelled up. He laid out of the hammock and died a few days later. It wasn't too long. He was kind of like food poisoned or something. Mm-hmm. I hadn't heard but that. But I know that they, my sister and my mother both died under the cemetery. Well, I thought you said your mother was in that area been up there, and they had newspapers on the floor where she just spit on the floor. Well, time. after when she when she was in the house. Well, you said she but was they coughed a lot, you know, and they spit up on the newspaper laying on the floor. Yeah. How could you afford a newspaper? I don't know where the newspapers came from. Oh, just papers. Yeah. Anyway. So. Now it's spreading all over. And everybody's getting TB. Read that why your dad finally decided to go to Texas to get out of the TB. It was supposed to be. Well, it was supposed to be. Health-wise. The air out in Texas was so much. Uh, Down where they hadn't heard the TB. And they healthier. Well, he also didn't. He wasn't the reason he got in such a jam. He used to drink and gamble. Yeah. Well, I've heard that. He lost one of the farms because he, he, he gambled and drank and, and uh, just all caught up with him. Well, he, he drank and gambled just a lot of the spending money. Well, with one time, you know, when we drove up through there with the... Uh, we went up through Tishman, we went through there, we drove up through, I don't know, 20 years ago or something. And went near the... What's the name of those little Indian places you lived in? Bonnie Town, Connerville. Yeah, those two, Bonnie Town, and we went to Bonnie Uh-huh. And, uh... I remember one time he came home drunk. And he was going to put my mother and Aunt Scrap in the smokehouse and lock them up. He was too, too drunk, he couldn't stand up. And they could handle him pretty good. But... I, why, we gonna, why did he want to lock him up? Because they'd leave him alone. Yeah. And then there was another time. He, he said, had his moonshine. He said they came, somebody brought him home and just left him on the porch and it was cold. And he tried to get Sadell to just let him lay there, but she insisted. Oh, somebody brought him home one night. So, it was real cold. Brought him home and, and knocked on the door and put him on the porch, on the step. And Sadell says, well, it was late. Sadell says, let's go get him and put him to bed. And I said, just let him stay out there. I don't care if he freezes to death. But we went out and got him and took him, put him to bed. Well, of course, the bowl, bowl wheels and everything helped. To get, Pardon? Get the bowl wheels and helped get him too. Uh, oh, one time he had a real Nice farm. Oh, he had one of the best. He had a big house and the whole day. Whole day. He had uh, he had one of the the best houses in the whole That's what county. That's when they drove up through there. Which town is this? This was uh. Pawnee Talk. This was out at um, uh, Tishomingo. Just out of there. So he had it. He had it when you got yeah, married. Yeah, he had. He had a real big farm. He had Delco lights. That was unheard of then. People just didn't have out. Yeah, Delco lights. Delco lights, electric lights in the. the, the motor, motor, uh, the out in the, uh, in the uh, barn. 
barns and stuff in the house and in the barns. Just a few people in there. That was in Tishomingo. Yeah, that was in Tishomingo. Now, so then what, how did he lose it? From gambling or the crops go bad or? Well, who knows? I don't know. Drinking, gambling, and. Drinking and Whatever. We lost everything. Now, I understand he originally came from Mississippi, though. Yeah, they, they, they did. Now, uh, they? your mom and dad? Daddy. He had two brothers. Joe and, and Uncle Joe and Uncle Prince. Prince. Prince yeah. or Prince? Prince, uh huh. Prince and three sisters. And, uh. Now, they all came from Mississippi, though. Right? Yeah, they came from Mississippi. Now, who was his mom and dad? Granddad Foster. I don't know what their names were. I never heard anything well, about it. Well, had to be a Foster, but. Foster. I but didn't know anything about them. Originally, they were in Mississippi. I don't know where they were from in Mississippi. But you knew they were from Mississippi. They were from Mississippi. But there were... I don't know his dad's name. But... Isn't that in that, that genealogy that Sue made up? The I don't know.
think you do much of that anymore because they probably run out of people. But uh, they used to get the groups of us when I was with a pretty, pretty good business when they had a, well, a couple all, million people to do. Well, I don't, I don't know who's getting anything out of it. You know, just except getting them into heaven. That's all they were interested in. There wasn't anybody getting them in fast. That's why they were so deep in jail. I don't know how they had me to take off the side. No, I'm trying to figure yeah, out. But anyway, but it, all of it's interesting. Yeah, well, that's interesting to most people. Because, you know, I got a, a deal of uh, history in the back. I don't know how far it goes back. So you've traced yours. Well, yeah, it's been traced and traced and traced. But Brigham Young, you see, the one I got the bottom all over, oh, was my great, great, great uncle. I think I remember you telling me. Yeah, 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 yeah. My great grandfather went across on that original track. And he used to tell us stories when I was a little Mississippi and came to Oklahoma to get the land. But they didn't get any. They didn't get any. So then Granddad Foster met her and married her. Yeah. And uh, he had a farm back then when uh -huh. he married her. So she, yeah. was, so uh, she was doing pretty good. Uh, my mother was a Neely. Yeah. And Grandpa Neely had a big farm. Yeah. He had a big barn. Lots of cattle, and he was a wealthy man. Well, Daddy, at one time, he had a big farm and cattle and land, but he drank and gambled it all away. Uh, why do you think he drank and gambled so much? Does, no, you, you don't know his dad, though. Well, they died. I don't know 
know anything about it. Never him. met his mom and dad. They no. never come from Mississippi. They never came to Texas or. But they were still alive when you. No. Came. They were all. They were. They dead. were all dead when before we were born. And I don't know anything about his folks at all. But his sister, the youngest one, was a kitty. And then there was Aunt Kitty, Aunt Callie, uh, Aunt. You gotta get back to that Aunt when they talk about it. <laughs> Aunt Scrap. That's, that comes out. Then on my mother's side, there was Uncle Rule, Uncle Joe. Another Uncle Joe? Huh? Uh -huh. Your dad had a brother named Joe, too? No. This is on my mother's side. Well, you said that there was Joe and Brennan on your dad's side, his brothers. Well, look, Daddy. Well, okay. Daddy was Joe.
once he left.
that's why it was such so diverse area up there. I mean, people all over the world. Back in Oklahoma then, there were no jobs at all. Well, you know, they had a lot of jobs in machine came from some doctor who ordered it for his wife from Germany and she didn't want it. So your dad uh, bought it from him or traded something for him. Well, that's a pretty good story. Well, but we left everything else there. Old, uh, this old potion. I bet, the, I bet, the, you know, as many people as have been going around, I bet you can still find somewhere in some antique place. Yeah. They used to have a tonic they'd give everybody in the spring of the year or something. They'd sell a tonic. It was good for everything. Cena leaves tea is what we took. What was it? Cena leaves tea. Some kind of drying leaves. Boil it, make a tea out of it, and drink it. It was kind of a lifestyle. Seen the leaves. Seen the leaves. The 
It's a tree called a cena or? It's a leaf. A bush called a cena. Cena leaves tea. Uh, you picked yeah. that up? You picked that up the bush and made it or you bought it? I don't, we bought it. I don't ever remember. So you never took any other drugs besides that? They didn't have that. That, I took some castor oil. That used to be a big thing. Castor oil and... Castor oil comes from what? Castor bean. A bean? Castor bean. And that would do what for you? Make you say you're better so you didn't have to take any more. That's what happened. Because I think I remember that as a kid. I know. I don't know if I ever had it, but I was threatened with it. It was an accident. Castor oil. Well, you, you remember. You we used to fun. take... So it was a laxative. So they would figure being a laxative, whatever was in you, you know, get yeah. it out of you by taking a laxative. Yeah, that, so anything, any of those potions were just laxatives to just speed it up out of your system, drink a lot of water, yeah. and right. that cured you. We used to, in the winter, my mother used to think you had to get vitamin D, you had to take cod liver oil. Because sunshine, it's all right. On the sun, on the sun, with a lot of cloud. That damn cod liver oil. Oh, that was tasting all. Right. So really, the sun is 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 it vitamin D? Sure, vitamin D from the sun. Yeah. So they knew about vitamins then back then. Oh yeah. 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 They knew about vitamin C. C and D and, 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 you know, B. So they were doing some kind of. Yeah, but generally it was herbs and stuff they gave you, you know, and all. Probably uh, if you took a pill. Or I mean, you guys went to town to the doctor. I mean, you know, I was a doctor, so I mean, did you go to town to the doctor, or was it, was it a roving doctor, or? They come. They I don't ever remember going to all of the, all the town to the right. doctor. Well, all of us were born in the, in the home. The doctor would come. Well, my mother said that the doctor was late getting there when I was there. I was born. I had an aunt who was there with her or something. Since she held me on her stomach till he got there and come cut the cord. Since he looked around and uh, one of them mopped the floor and said, Well, I picked up a string out of the mop, tied off the of cord. <laughs> she said she worried about that worse than anything. So I pick it up off the floor. I mean, she thought, I guess they did. But I had uh, so it wasn't too sterile like that. Well, he, he was already filled with all of us. I had heart trouble, supposedly. Of course, scarlet fever. And I was, when I was in the seventh grade, I was out of school for a half a year and in bed. And I, that doctor, Dr. Hubbard, everybody thought he was really, a, you know, he had the best reputation around there. I found out later what a quack. There was three of us in town that had heart trouble in the band. I got it. And I went up, uh, finally we would go in up there. Well, you know, I'd have to take a urine specimen every time. I remember him holding that. Yep, you're looking better. It's looking better. That was the end. Analyze it. Just, yeah, yeah, you're, you're getting better. You're looking good. <laughs> so you are. So you go back in red and come back and see me in two or three weeks. So he checked your heart by your urine specials. Well, it's best to tire you. He finally went out one day. And he'd listen to your heart. He went out and told his mother. The no. doctor said it's okay for him to go back to school. I went for him. My mom was with me, and he said, well, it's fine. He'll be, he, he can start getting up a little bit each day. He can start getting out of bed and moving around and everything. So the next time, she couldn't go with me for some reason. Just dropped me off and went back on the back and told him he said it was all right for me to get up and go to school. <laughs> I, I never went back. So I was really sweating it out. I played football. You had to get your heart checked. You had a heart. He listened. It was a different night. He didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Uh, well, you know, I passed a 6 4 exam for flying, and, uh, that, which is the what the astronauts had to pass, you know, there was never anything wrong with my heart. And that 
that's why I tell you laying around that bed, I'd get up and hell, I could hardly walk. Just laying around all the time. I even was glad to get up and be able to milk the cows again. <laughs> so you guys don't remember anything out of the ordinary though happening. It was all just humdrum. Every day the same as the same as the one before. Well, there was no big I remember when my mother was on her dying bed. Did yeah. With tuberculosis. Yeah. You remember speaking to it? Oh. And she had a newspaper, a bed. She just spit on that newspaper. She says the only thing she can remember about her mother, she told her about the pig and the fruit. She got the pigs from fruit and brought her a pear. I found a, a, a ripe peach. peach. And I took it to her mother. And she told me to go get a switch off the tree and bring it to her. And she, she was so weak she couldn't hold the switch, but she hit my legs a couple of times. For picking the fruit. <laughs> she says that's all she remembers about her. But you, uh, do you remember talking to her on her, the day she died, or? No. Was my dad around then? Uh-huh. He was hanging around and watched it? I don't remember where he was. He was there. No. But she was very, very sick. Guys went through a lot of newspaper around there, it sounds but like. But she was, yeah. she probably weighed 50 pounds. We could just skin and bones. Well, no, you know, we had a lot of fun when I was, we all had horses, you know. See, they were, used to get up and go hunt coyotes. And and did you guys have it as bad as that or what? No. I, I had, I had it. Story house had deco lights outside in the barn and the well house and the milk house. It was the, the best farmhouse in the whole area. Here, here's the way I look to it. I'm right here. Where is that? Just, uh, just come back. But he, he drank. What happened in all that? Well, the one who got caught up no, on the farm. The door came to me. I don't know. Take me up in the timber up the mountain. Used to skid timber. That, that, that's where I lived growing up. Right there. <laughs> that was my work job. Uh, some of the family down from Dad's overalls. Uh, well, overalls were big back then. Overalls, well, I don't know that. Those were because they were grown to Dad. The patches on them. Well, they were big time. I'd just come down from the, working up in the tent over there. I don't know what one of my sisters would come out. I won't take a picture. That's my dad there. Yeah. So everybody wore overalls, I guess, back then. Yeah, that town. Well, 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 my daddy, my brother wore overalls. instead of 98 cents or something. Uh, I was cut to them overalls. How did you even wear them? Jim had a pair of striped ones to wear to church. Striped overalls. She wore a pair of striped overalls with a bow tie. Oh, and they were going to church. I used to go to Sunday school all the time church. Oh, no, there was a church in the area or now. So how did Sadell get so, oh, and she got saved by some woman, some woman named Eurus or Eurus or something, you know? She was telling me that some woman over in, uh, what's that town by the level in there? Uh, Amherst? No, uh, it's right by Lubbock. You were here? No, it's between Lubbock and Loveland. I saw the sign two, three times. Oh. Sundown? Where, where uh, Sadal got saved. Yeah. Well, I 
that guy with her. She said someone took her up back there, made her kneel down, pray, and said that she, that's what it all happened for her. She said she felt all this, whatever. Yeah. And she's been trying to save people ever since. She didn't succeed much with me, though, I guess. It's a Sony. Oh, that's the Sony. Yeah. yeah. You have anything you'd like to say to America? No. Any mean, words of words of wisdom? I, I have no words. I'm, I'm not a very wise man. <laughs> not lately. <laughs> Nobody would learn anything from what I have to say. That's for sure. What do you have to say, Mary? Well, it's dark in here. I can't even see you over there. Huh. Yeah. Up. Is that not plugged in? There it is. Now I can see you. You want to say hello to everybody? Hello. Who are you saying hi to, Ricky or Debbie or? Everybody. Everybody, okay. <laughs>